data dictionary vehicle registration now we're going to take a look at a data dictionary for vehicle registration though this actual uh, presentation should not be in the form of a data dictionary because as you're going to see here this is clearly an entity within a relational database and specifically a junction which means the connecting entity between other entities within a relational database and relational databases are usually represented as schemas in the form of entity relationship diagrams though I still believe this actual video will be helpful if you are going to create that type of database or try to emulate it in describing what type of data will be involved and also gives me a good chance to highlight not just the primary keys but the foreign keys used and related to other videos where you've seen we've created separate flat file databases and then how we can connect them together to create a relational model in order to make the entire wider database of this RTA or RMS in registering vehicles and knowing who their drivers are, are of those vehicles. So let's get started and go through these entities and specifically what fields are first. So the fields in this database are registration ID and every ID for each car registered by a driver. We've got a license ID, a vehicle ID, a CTP green slip, a pink slip, registration payment and then registration expiry so you're going to see that there are three forms of id here and obviously we can only have one primary key so what are those other fields well obviously the registration id being this is the vehicle registration table that we're going to be creating is obviously the primary key it is the single unique field that identifies all the individual records stored in this database now the next two are both foreign keys. So I'm going to put a little FK next to them. What that means is they are both primary keys from other entities in this relational database. So as you've seen in the previous videos, if you've watched them, we've already created a license ID in the form of registering different drivers in New South Wales. We've already created a vehicle ID database okay, used for registering different vehicles in New South Wales. So in order to avoid the duplication of data, instead of me entering all that data into this new vehicle registration database, instead we're linking this entity, this table, to those other tables. So we call them entities as well. And that is why the relational database model works. It gets rid of data redundancy. I don't have to enter in data more than once. I don't have to enter in the license holder and the vehicle information all into this database. Instead, I'm just going to whip it from where it already exists. It already exists in other databases. Okay, so it reduces that data redundancy. I don't need to enter it in multiple times. As well, I don't have to update any changes in multiple areas. I just have to update it back in its original database and the changes are made. So that's something I really wanted to emphasize here. And obviously we will look at an entity relationship diagram that illustrates this as well. So that's why we have the foreign keys. They basically are the primary key from those two other database tables, those two other entities that will link them to this database here so I can get their information. So we'll go through the data types for all this data. So for the registration ID, obviously it is text, okay? And same with the license ID and vehicle ID. But the only one that's actually being entered in this database is the registration ID, because that's the only one being created here. The license ID and vehicle ID, they're just numbers that will be pulled across with them. So the data entry operator won't be creating any IDs here. They're just pulled upon from their respective entities of those other uh, database tables. The CTP, green slip, pink slip, and payment registration are all booleans because basically they're just confirming that the actual customer registering their vehicles has those things. They have their CTP green slip, which means the car is insured, okay? And that way, if they're in an accident, it will be able to cover any damages brought to the other car, so they've got to at least have third-party insurance. The pink slip confirms that basically their car is roadworthy. They've taken it to a mechanic and they've agreed that, yep, this car is okay. So we just need a yes for that as well. And then the registration payment means after they've done their pink slip, they paid their mechanic and their registration has been paid. And so we just need another yes there. Once all that's okay, then basically from the date that they pay their registration, an expiry is set usually the following year. Okay, and that is obviously a date time, which says it expires that next year. For data formats, they're all pretty straightforward, okay? Um, you might see, if you've watched the previous videos, that the license ID and vehicle ID follow the same formats that the primary keys for those two different tables uh, were. So the license ID was eight numbers, 
okay? And the vehicle ID is a combination of letters and numbers, okay? And they're going to be exactly the same when they're imported here in order to create this relational database. The registration ID itself has one letter at the beginning and then it's followed by a series of numbers. As you can see, it's got an X and then a series of Ns coming after it, okay? The Booleans will all be re represented as either Y or N, so yes or no, for all them being either true or false, okay? And then the registration expiry is just as a year, okay? We say it expires in 2019. Okay, and that way they know they need to update the next year. It could be that they also include the month sometimes, but usually it just shows the year that it's going to expire. Okay, for field sizes, it's just pretty much exactly what we see here. We can actually read all these ones because we have a format for every single field in this database. So I can see the registration ID is nine characters in length, the license ID is eight characters in length, the vehicle ID is six characters in length, CTP, pink slip, and registration payment being Boolean, they all only need to be one character in length, okay, just to represent Y or N. You could extend it to three characters, so it actually says yes as a maximum or no, okay, and then for the registration expiry, just the four digits for the year. The description all outlines everything I've been saying, okay, the only one that's unique for rego is obviously the primary key. Okay, but then as you can see with the foreign keys, they allude to who the driver of the vehicle is registered to. And the vehicle ID alludes to which vehicle is being registered. And then it obviously is mapped to all the attributes associated with each record in those other entities, those other database tables. Okay, and as you can see here, the, the other beauty of the description is I know what these other things mean too. So the CTP green slip means is the car insured? The pink slip signifies has the car been inspected and deemed roadworthy? And the registration payment has the rego been paid? Okay, so once again, the importance of descriptions so that if you have no idea what this database is about, I can read this data dictionary and get an understanding of what all the data is going to be about. And finally, in my examples of showing what type of data will be entered, you can see that I've got dashes for the license ID and vehicle ID because we're not actually entering those actual um, IDs into this database. They'll be pulled across okay, from other database tables. Okay, and coming in that way. So we don't really need to know how to enter it. Okay, I could show it there. Okay, in order to cover all bases, but it's not really necessary in this specific data dictionary because they've already been created somewhere else. And remember the whole purpose of the relationship model is no data redundancy. I should not be entering the same data in twice. So I hope this has given you an understanding, not just of how to set up this actual virtual registration data dictionary, but also the importance of the relational model. We will in our next video look at an actual schema that is the better way of representing a relational database, but in still planning just the vehicle registration table for uh, the wider relational database, this data dictionary would be helpful and I hope you see the worth in that.